So, sometimes you know what you know, and sometimes you know what you don't know, and sometimes, as the Fire Sign Theater says, everything you know is wrong. You know that you're wrong, but you oh, fear oh, you're right. You suspect you're out of sync. And thinks that you're out of your mind. Everything you know is wrong. There are around 7 billion people on planet Earth, and nearly 6 billion are glued to their cell phones 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Well, maybe 1 billion. Anyhow, from texting to surfing the web and even watching TV, we use our cell phones to do just about everything today. We assume that these devices that we can't live without are safe for us, and if you ask any major cell phone manufacturer, they'll tell you that they are. But behind countless PR campaigns and corporate-funded studies lie the ugly, possible truth about the hidden effects that cell phones have on us. So if you think that talking on your cell phone for hours on end is perfectly safe, then everything you know is wrong. Joining me now is Dr. Devrov Davis, president of the Environmental Health Trust and author of the book Disconnect, the truth about cell phone radiation and your health, what the industry has done to hide it, and what you can do to protect your family. Dr. Davis, welcome. Thank you so much. Great to have you with us. So what is the truth about cell phones? The truth is they're very valuable devices, and they are two-way microwave radios that should not be held directly next to the brain or body. And just like don't put your hand in the microwave oven kind of thing. I mean, not well, that you can anyway, because they make it see you. Right. But on the other hand, a cell phone is a very weak form of microwave radiation. Now, it's not as powerful as an oven, but it has a very similar frequency, and we are, some of us, using it for thousands of minutes a month right next to our brain. And I'm particularly concerned about how we're giving it to infants and toddlers. Yes. Now, I, I remember when I was a little kid walking home from, from school, from elementary school, I was six years old, seven years old, there was a shoe store. And I could walk in there and stick my feet in and wiggle my toes and watch them in real time on an x-ray machine. And I did it oh, dozens yes. of times. Yes. And they pulled those things off the market because they were killing people with cancer. They were getting leukemia and things from them. Right. And we also used to have watches that glowed in the dark, and that was radium. And it turns out that was giving people cancer, especially if they slept with a watch near their face. Right. Um, is are we going to at some point you know now this is 40 years out so are we going to at some point look back to now 40 years from now and say holy cow look at that that's a very good question and, and the answer is the reason i set up environmental health trust is so that we don't have to wait 40 years for the kind of proof that we now have about ionizing radiation which was what in, was in those shoes and which was on that radiant dial yeah. what we know now is that people who use cell phones heavily uh, for 10 years or more have doubled or greater the risk of brain cancer in most well-controlled studies. Now, in fact, cancer is not the main concern that I have. I'm really concerned about sperm count and about effects on pregnancy. I just got back from a conference in Turkey and Greece where we heard new studies showing that prenatal exposure to animals results in offspring that have smaller brains and more hyperactivity. Hmm. Wow. Um, so is you said you're concerned about sperm counts and fertility, but people don't generally stick their phones in their pants. Is, is, well, is, actually, is, this, is this systemic? I mean, if you're holding the phone, I get, are you an antenna? Is your whole body an antenna? Or is this people actually carry their phone in their pockets? The phones are engineered today so that the antenna is usually out the back and it's symmetrical. So half of the radiation from the, that phone gets into whatever it's next to. I keep my phone on airplane mode right now and just right. using it to show you this. Sure. There are ways to use phones more safely. I'm not telling you not to use phones because, of course, they can be useful. But I think everyone needs to use their phones a lot less than they do and to know that distance is your friend and if you talk less, you'll be better off. You can use the phone as long as you keep it away from your body, but in general, we're using phones for a lot of rather silly purposes. So use it in speakerphone mode, for example? Absolutely. Use it in speakerphone, use it with a headset, and understand that the World Health Organization reviewed the evidence on this with experts who were independent, and they concluded that cell phone radiation was in the same category as DDT and engine exhaust. Now, we wow. take steps for DDT and engine exhaust. We won't give those things to children to play with. Right. I, you know, when, when Teddy Kennedy got brain cancer, I, my, and it's, uh, who knows? I mean, obviously, but they, he's, there's a lot of people who are getting that brain cancer who are of the age to be the early adopters, not for this generation of phones, but for the much earlier ones. I, I remember having a phone back in the 80s that, that actually burned the skin on my on yeah. the palm of my thumb um, using the thing, which was right next to where the antenna was, one of those exactly. little pull-out antennas. Um, is, it, is it possible that they've gotten so much better that we don't have to worry, and it's really the people who were exposed 10 and 20 years ago who have to be concerned, or? 
well. Are we, have we just gone from x-ray the, the foot to radium on the watch dial? And we well, have you know, that's a very good question, and the answer is I don't know. You're absolutely right. The old phones were worse, and the people who use them the most, the realtors, the lawyers, the politicians, they are the cutting, the, the first wave of uh, damage that we're seeing. But I really think that brain cancer is the wrong question. We've got to stop asking about it, mm -hmm. and we've got to start looking at the effects that we see on learning, on the nervous system, on some people who are very sensitive to this radiation and find it really incapacitating for long. A lot of people now are experiencing tinnitus, headaches, and even spells of dizziness that they can't fully understand. And it may turn out that these exposures are having effects on the nervous system that we don't really well understand. From this non-ionizing radiation. Absolutely. It is non-ionizing, but it's quite dangerous over the long run. And we've got to be do a better job of protecting ourselves. That's why we created Environmental Health Trust. And please like us on Facebook. And I look forward to talking to you more about this on the radio. Great. Thank you. Dr. Thank Davis, you so much. Pleasure having you with us.